So we're a multi-level bar in downtown Phoenix that pays homage to the spirit of Mexico and the spirits of Mexico. We serve tequila, mezcal, bacanora, ricea, sotal, all the agave spirits, right? Uh, but we're a gathering place here in downtown Phoenix with a very inclusive vibe. I'm David Taita, I'm the co-owner of Barcoa Agavaria. We weren't looking for a historic building per se, but when you see red brick in Phoenix, you think, I want to be near it, and I want to respect it, and I want to be a part of it. There's like just a certain energy around these old buildings. Mike Malero, City of Phoenix Planning and Development, Office of Customer Advocacy. The building is a historic building. Uh, it was previously a hardware store, but uh, as you can tell, it's, it's a huge building, and they utilized the basement, and a lot of the, uh, the original characteristics of the building have remained. There was plaster over this brick and we very carefully chipped away at it. Uh, I'm a project manager and I was working on Barcoa, which is an adaptive reuse project, along with uh, the art studio. Some challenging aspects of this project was we had two different design professionals, two different businesses moving at their own speed, so trying to coordinate them uh, together and getting their approvals, their inspections, and uh, all their permits was a bit challenging, but we brought it all together. What we're doing with Chico, true collaboration. We're sharing a space, and in a lot of cases, our spaces are combined for private party buyouts or during First Fridays. We pull these giant curtains back, and we're one space where you can get a drink in the cantina and walk around and look at some art. There was one back corner facing the alley which wasn't historic, so we knocked that out and put in a garage door for taco trucks to pull up. So that gave us an opportunity to really open up the back side of the building. But otherwise, we haven't really done anything to the facade. We're just keeping the same old door that it always had as our entrance. So Mike so has big. been a godsend for this process because there's been so many times where I had a question and I thought, who do I go to? Well, I go to Mike, you know, because Mike is sort of the central nervous system for at least what I saw moving through the process. We have the arts district here. Uh, we're along the light rail. So there's a lot of uh, incentive to uh, open businesses in this area. You know, I think COVID definitely did put a pause uh, on, the, uh, on people's plans, uh, not knowing when they can open, you know, what the restrictions will be. Uh, but I think for the most part, uh, you know, a lot of business owners such as David, he was great to work with. He's very persistent, very responsive. And I think, uh, you know, when we have that, uh, uh, owners like that, that want to move forward and, and, and don't, I don't want to say take no for an answer, but they look for solutions and uh, you know different uh, opportunities to uh, capitalize and, and keep moving forward. And I definitely want QR codes around the building to let people know what the building is, that it's called the hardware store. Who are the Knights of Pythias? They're inscribed on the front of the building in the cement, you know, that our sump pump down in the basement is actually in this pit that was already there. It's very, there were a lot of like sort of serendipitous moments and me just working here late, I, I just, I don't know, you feel the energy of these buildings? It's been really interesting.